My entitled family try to force me to move out of my house so my entitled older brother can move into it, claiming that I don't need this much space to begin with and that I would be better off living in the camper outside. Here's what happened. So I'm a single man in my early 30s. I've got a brother who's 29 and he's already got four kids now. He had his first at 22 and the second followed a year later. Then the third, two years after that. And the fourth is most recently born a couple of months ago. His wife and I do not get along as she always likes to try and get a rise out of me by acting superior, then turns into an extremely self-victimizing drama queen. If I retaliated against her in any way, she can cry in an instant and can put on an extremely convincing show to get sympathy from just about anyone. My parents and brother absolutely adore her, even though they know exactly how she really is and just don't really care. She's very good looking, I'll give her that, but she's so awful that I could never be attracted to her. She also refuses to get any sort of job, even though she has a college degree, and my mother willingly helps with the kids all day, so their finances are entirely dependent on my brother. This also means they can't afford to live anywhere but my parents' house, and privacy is a bit of an issue with all of them under one roof in a three-bedroom house that was built in the 60s. Growing up, my younger brother was also the obvious favorite. We are three years apart in age, but he developed a superiority complex because I was badly punished if I retaliated against his antics in any way back then. It was obvious my parents cared for him a lot more because he got the lion's share of everything unless people called them out on it which did happen a fair bit by my other family members which is why my parents packed us all up and moved us about 150 miles away from them so they generally would only see us on holidays since it was a three hour drive my brother got awful towards me physically on a number of occasions flirted relentlessly with my first girlfriend to the point where she broke up with me and laughed at any misfortune that I had and my parents just told me to suck it up. Whenever I was upset about it, I only got equal treatment when my parents wanted to keep up appearances. I admit it was rather funny to see the looks on their faces whenever they had to treat me equal to my brother on birthdays and Christmas because other people were present. We had relatives that were very nosy and loved gossiping drama. So my parents did their best to hide what was really going on and threatened to take all my stuff away if I didn't keep my mouth shut. If anything, it just made my parents celebrate more when I turned 18 and moved out because it meant they no longer had to provide for me. I wasn't even done with high school yet when I moved out, but honestly, couch surfing was far better than living with them. I was low contact ever since leaving home. They didn't even show up for my high school graduation, but I really didn't care. From that point on, I would usually only see my parents and brothers on holidays, just like the rest of the family. The start of the 2020 pandemic was not kind to me. I lost my job and couldn't renew the lease on my then condo because my roommate also lost his job and neither of us could afford the place on unemployment money. It was a rented two-bedroom condo that I really loved. As the lease was ending, my roommate left early to move back in with relatives and I had to sell nearly all my stuff because I was soon going to be homeless if I didn't downsize to an extreme. I really shouldn't have rented a place that was so expensive, but I liked living the high life until that life wasn't kind to me and I realized I should have been living somewhere much cheaper so I could have saved more money to fall back on. But I had a plan. I own a truck simply for the fact that I've always loved trucks, so I found a $1,000 camper in good shape and put it on my truck just so I could live out of it for a while. It was supposed to be temporary, but I ended up living out of it far longer than I ever thought. I originally was hoping to be able to live out of the camper at my parents' house, where my brother and his family still reside as well. But when I asked my parents to let me stay for a while, they told me they had a full house and didn't want me there. Plus, we hadn't exactly gotten along long in the past decade. They said they'd only agree to let me park my camper there if I paid them basically what it would cost to rent an apartment in my area. That was way too much just to park a camper. I was jobless and trying to save as much of my unemployment money as I could until I could find a new job. I may as well be living in an apartment with that rent price that they were asking. My parents called my camper an eyesore and told me to take a hike since we couldn't come to an agreement. And my sister-in-law thought it was absolutely hilarious that I had to live in a camper. My brother joined her in pointing at it and mocking me while calling me a homeless bum. I parked my truck and camper in a store parking lot to sleep on the first night that I had nowhere else to go. I felt scared out of my mind that someone might try to break in. Suffice to say, I didn't sleep well that night. There was nowhere else I could go as any other relatives that owned houses were fairly far away and all my friends were apartment people. I was pretty attached to my area as well, so I didn't want to just leave. I'd also had my mail forwarded 
to my friend's apartment. It was the only way that I could still get my mail anymore. Finding a stable place to park was pretty difficult. I went looking around to try and find a job similar to my old one. It took months of living the nomadic camper life. In that time, I had to deal with a lot. Everything from beggars to people who were addicted to substances to people demanding that I leave because my camper was an eyesore. At one point, someone who told me to move claimed to be with an HOA. I wasn't even parked on a street with houses. And when I questioned them, what HOA are you talking about? They got incredibly belligerent and threatened me. I moved my camper anyway just to avoid the trouble. In order to have a steady supply of electricity, I learned to use a long extension cord to plug in anywhere I could recharge my camper batteries. This meant sneaking around, plugging it into an outside outlet of a random building while parked on a street. I know that's a crummy thing to do, but I had to keep my batteries charged so my refrigerator would stay cool. I had a small solar power bank for recharging my phone, but I didn't have anything like a generator. And generators are noisy and require fuel anyways, so I did what I had to do. After months of living like that, I finally managed to get a new job. I had to move to the neighboring city to find a job that didn't involve retail. I worked retail while in college and promised myself never again, though I was nearly ready to break that promise. I was still getting unemployment money, but I had no stable place to live while receiving it, and I didn't want to still be jobless when it ran out. Plus, I was bored out of my mind. I had little else to do but read, watch movies on a small portable DVD player, use my phone or laptop, and keep note of where I could park and what local bathrooms I could use. I kind of envy that the Japanese have public bathhouses. We could really use stuff like that over here. When I finally landed a new job, I practically lived in the back lot of the building by the warehouse, in old employee parking spaces. Literally no one else seemed to bother using because they were so far in the back that the area was borderline forgotten. My boss and company owner actually liked this arrangement because I was willingly available to take any shift I could get so long as I had enough sleep. He even let me take the camper off my truck and set it up in one of the spaces so I could drive around without it. Not exactly sure if this was legal, but no one bothered us about it. The entire time that I lived back there, I didn't have to deal with many trespassers. There were a few, but the security guards escorted them out. I was pretty much on call almost all the time when they needed me and was working virtually every day of the week. My boss let me plug the camper into the building for power and water, and I paid a small amount of rent by working for free on Sundays when no one else was in the office but the janitor and security guard. Beyond that, I usually had a shower at a friend's apartment or at my local gym as the camper didn't have a shower in it and only had a portable toilet, and I didn't want to fill it because emptying it was a nasty chore. So I used other bathrooms as often as I could. I had a key to the warehouse and could go in to use the bathroom there at any hour. I was even on a first name basis with a night security guard. He's since become one of my closest friends. The camper was easy to heat in the winter with a small electric heater. Summers were not fun though. The camper didn't have AC so I had to get a used portable AC unit just to try and make it bearable. I made a lot of overtime pay and hands on learned some new skills from other employees. Eventually midway into this year I landed a better position in the company as a supervisor and started making a better salary than my old job. And that's when I decided I wanted a house. The scare I'd gotten from losing my condo made me realize I needed something much more stable for the long term. I looked around for something close to my work and just two miles away found a three bedroom manufactured home on a small property. But I managed to get it for $10,000 less than the asking price somehow. I used nearly my entire savings for a down payment and got approved for a home loan. I finally didn't have to live in a camper anymore. There was enough space for me to back my truck in behind the house to take the camper off to set it up in the backyard. So I put it there as its own building, just in case I want to use it again. When I was fully settled in the house, I was dumb enough to brag about it on my book of faces, if you know what I mean. My family saw the post, and that's where things went absolutely horrible. After a few weeks, my parents and brother, along with his family, came to visit completely unannounced to have a tour of my home. I didn't even give them the address. So how they found where I live, I still still don't know. None of my friends have fessed up and no prior family members visited me before that. So I wonder if they stalked me at work and followed me home or something. It really would not surprise me. Once I opened the door, they practically all shoved their way in like a bunch of rambunctious tourists, then just started making themselves at home. They all kept poking around and my sister-in-law had this creepy smirk that she kept sending my way. And it was only later that I figured out why. And it made me madder than a bull on steroids that just got stung by a hornet. My parents were constantly talking about how I've got so much extra space now and it's too much
much for someone like me who has no wife or kids. And okay, I don't have one now, but maybe someday. And my brother kept remarking about how there was more space than our parents' house, and my house was closer to his job too. It was red flags all around, I know. Eventually, my brother asked me to speak privately. Everyone else suddenly left the room and piled onto the front porch. That's what finally made me realize they planned something. My brother, let's call him Dan for the sake of simplicity, said the house was too much for me alone, and I should let him move in with his family because his wife is pregnant with kid number four, and my house is much closer to his job. He pointed out that I already have the camper, so I could just live in the outside while they live in the main house. And I'd like to point out that Dan never once spoke of offering rent. Mind you, he's got a good job. He also started talking about how there would be changes and even curfews, and that I couldn't just walk in at any time without prior notice. If it weren't my brother, I'd think that the person I was talking to had lost their mind. But Dan lost his marbles long ago, thanks to our parents treating him like he was the center of the world. I tried to speak, but he kept talking over me, as if I had no say in the matter. There was no way on earth I'd rent my house, or parts of my house to him. Other people maybe, just so I can pay the mortgage off more easily, but certainly not him or his nasty wife. I've heard of this exact same kind of situation in videos online many times, and never once did I think I'd actually live it, because I thought it was so ludicrous. But my parents, brother, and sister-in-law do all fit the bill for a bunch of narcissists who are clearly entitled and kind of crazy. So I picked up my phone and set it to start recording, and then I just held on to it. Dan didn't even seem to care or notice that I'd done this, and just sat there with his arms waving around while talking about all the reasons of why he needed my house. Then went from saying that to acting like it was a done deal and trying to reach out his hand to shake mine. And it was right then that I finally decided to show my backbone, and I told him absolutely not. And I said it loud enough that Dan stumbled backward for a second. I'd rarely ever raise my voice to him on that level, because I was punished by my parents if I ever did that. But this was my house, not theirs. My spine can be as shiny as it wants here. I stood up and then told him that my house was not up for grabs. And acting like I'll let him move in just because they want it won't make it happen. I bought my house for me, and it's not my fault he keeps having more kids and has to keep living with our parents, because he can't afford to move out. Dan got as physically close to me as he could, without actually touching me, and said that I didn't deserve the home, and he needed a better place for his family to live. I laughed back in his face, and said that's total BS, because I worked hard to be able to buy my house. Of course I deserved it. Dan started yelling that I have no wife or kids, and I don't need all the space, so I may as well just give it to him. I said I'm not giving him anything, and he never even offered to pay me rent. If I let him move in, I'd still be covering the entire mortgage on my own house, without even being able to live in my own house. Then, Dan told me that he shouldn't have to pay rent because his family comes first, and our parents said I was going to do this, and that I will. And that's when I yelled at him and said, as if their word was law or something, and told Dan that they did not have the right or power to give my house to him. Then, right on cue, my parents and sister-in-law barged back in through the front door and surrounded me to try and force me to agree. There was a lot of fighting, but to sum it up, from this point on, I heard the line, just do it for Dan, way more times than I can remember. In the fight, I told them they all don't have a say in my life or my house, and then I told them to get out before I call the cops. My sister-in-law screamed at me the loudest about how she was pregnant again, and I can't do this to her. I said I did nothing to her. She just assumed that she could take and take from me like I would just allow it. I had no obligations to her or her family. I then called her a stuck-up brat who never had any respect for me, so I don't care what she thinks or how many kids she has. I have no sympathy for her. She won't be living in my house. Well, that made her angry enough to try and attack me. So there was a shuffle back and forth, but the phone I was holding recorded pretty much everything. So I held it up and said I was going to call the police if they didn't leave right away. My parents told Dan that they were leaving. Then my mother said I had a week to come to my senses. I told her I won't be and to not come back. Then I told my sister-in-law that my phone recorded everything and if she tries anything, I will press charges for assault. She screamed at me and then stormed out loudly crying with her face in her hands. My mother was the last one out the door and said that I better do this for Dan and my sister-in-law. But I responded by saying that I won't be doing any sort of thing anytime soon. What an absolute roller coaster. The original poster has been through so much. They went from living in a camper for a while to then saving up all this money just to try and buy their own place. And now their entitled family is jumping 
all over them again, basically trying to kick this guy out and force him to live back in that camper again. And that is so unbelievably toxic and so not fair. He worked so hard for this. He went through so many trials and tribulations. He absolutely earned this house. So it's absolutely backwards that they would try and kick him out of it. I mean, how entitled do you have to be to not only show up to somebody's house, but try and coerce them into getting out of that house? And this is after they treated him so poorly and forced him to move his camper off their property. So good for the original poster for standing up for themselves because this type of behavior is so inappropriate and this guy will honestly be so much better off without dealing with these people in his life. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. An entitled Karen claims that I'm faking my illness, claiming that I stole the medicine I used to manage my pain and that I'm some kind of corrupt liar just looking for attention. But when she said that, I wasn't going to take that sitting down. So I marched right back over to her and I put her in her place. Here's what happened. So this happened about four or five years ago. For some context, I was about 18 years old at the time and I was diagnosed with osteoarthritis in my left knee. It's a degenerative form of arthritis and my case was severe. It was a constant thing and I would be in excruciating pain and taking painkillers to make it a little less painful. My doctor, a few weeks prior, instructed me to stay off my leg and use crutches, wear a knee brace, and also prescribed me a heavy painkiller medication. Well, one day I was on my way home from another checkup and it was around lunchtime. I had to take the medicine every 24 hours with a meal, so I stopped by Burger King to eat and then take my medication before my pain would return. A clerk carried my tray to the table and got my drink for me. I sit down and place my medication bottle on the tray so I don't forget to take it. So as I'm eating, across the room is the entitled Karen and her kid of the story. As I'm eating, she gives me a death stare and I'm not sure why, but I choose to just ignore her. So I'm eating my food and then I took my medication after I finished. I get up to take my tray to the trash, which is right behind her. The clerk was taking an order and couldn't help me with my stuff. So I put both my crutches under one of my arms and carried my trash over to the trash can. I get over there and I dump it. And as I'm trying to figure out how to carry my drink out, the entitled Karen speaks up to me in a semi-sarcastic tone. She says to me, what's wrong with you? Now, at this point, I'm used to being asked this. So I answer calmly and said, I have severe osteoarthritis and it's very painful and hard to walk. This entitled Karen then said something I absolutely never expected. And I was completely blown away when she said something so vile as this. She actually looked at me and said, I bet you're faking. I looked at her confused and I said, excuse me? She then said, you're probably doing this for attention. I bet you those pills aren't even yours. I know all you college kids are just addicts. You are a terrible influence for the younger generation. At this point, she was obviously referring to her young son who looked completely embarrassed. I didn't go to college, but I think she was basically saying that as another way of saying young adult. I was flabbergasted by what she just said. I suffered through severe pain and struggled to do even simple tasks. She literally does not know what she's talking about. I look at her and I say, ma'am, what do I have to gain from doing all this? I suffer from severe pain and it makes me feel useless, as well as a burden to everyone. I wish I didn't have to do this, but I do. This entitled Karen then says, yeah, right, you liar. You're just an addict and stole those pills and you're just faking all of this so you don't get caught. At this point, I was upset. So I grabbed my ID and my pill bottle and I slammed it on the table in front of her. I looked at her and I said, read it and weep. She took a minute to read the pill bottle and my ID and looked at me to compare my face to the picture and her face went pale when she realized that she was wrong. She looked at me and said, I'm so sorry. I apologize. I responded by saying, I know a lot of people my age are like that, but don't just make assumptions based on stereotypes. You're basically telling your kid it's all right to judge others based on their stereotypes. Now have a good day. And after I said that, she didn't say another word, but instead she just looked down absolutely defeated. A clerk ran over to help me carry out my drink and hold the door. As we walked out, he asked what happened. So I told him everything, with them eventually helping me into my car. He then says for me to wait a minute. He runs inside and returns with a gift card for $10 as some kind of apology and that he is going to go talk to this lady. I thanked him for all that he did and then I left. So hopefully I never have to deal with someone like that ever again. The entitled Karen in this story is seriously a massive jerk. Like how could you possibly treat someone like that? She seriously looked at somebody in crutches who just so happened to be young at the time and say to them, you know what? You're faking it. Like what's wrong with you? Why would anybody in their right mind look at someone and make that kind of assumption. That is seriously so toxic 
toxic and disgusting. And you know what? If I was in the original poster's shoes, I probably would have gone off a lot more than this person did. I mean, they were a lot nicer than I would have been if this lady said, oh, you're faking your injury. Like, no lady, I've got pills with my name on it. And just like the original poster, I would feel the same way. I gain nothing by faking my illness. Like, this doesn't help me in any way, and I really just don't like it. Why would I want this? So good for you for standing up for yourself. Because that entitled Karen was completely out of line. But even with her snarky remarks, you handled it like a pro. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out in the description below and subscribe.